Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be going through a war drama film entitled Full Metal Jacket. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with an 18 men inside the barber shop getting their heads shaved making themselves bald. They are all doing this and preparing this for they are about to enter the training of the corps. After shaving their heads, they are now all in the island wherein Gunnery Sergeant Hartman is shouting loudly introducing himself as their senior drill instructor. Sergeant Hartman is orienting the men in the island, saying that they will only speak if they are spoken to and that their first and last words should be sir. The boys are screaming as their response. Hartman is saying that if they leave the island then they are considered as ladies, if they survive they will be part of the recruits coming from the training. These men are going to be a weapon, they will be a minister of death praying for war, Hartman says. The speech of Sergeant is not done yet, he still continues with his talk saying such downgrading destructive but somehow motivational lines. He is indeed a hard and harsh Sergeant leader for the Marine Corps. He assumes that these young men will hate him, however the more they hate Sergeant is the reason for them to learn more. Sergeant Hartman is continuing his talk when he asks one man standing in the line questioning who he is, as response this man answers and screams his name loudly that he is Private Brown, but the sergeant chooses to change his name into Private Snowball. On the other side an eyeglass man whispers making a joke about John Wayne, then when the sergeant hears him it triggers the sergeant and then comes to him right away. Sergeant Hartman is now threatening all of them to admit who really is the one who said the joke, the eyeglass man then admits that he is the one who says it, after that he is now known as Private Joker. Sergeant then gives him a fist in his stomach causing him to get hurt and get down. Angrily, Sergeant tells him that he should not cry or laugh ordering him to stand up at once, then he asks what is the reason why he joins the Corps, Private Joker replies to him saying that his reason is to kill. Private Joker is now making a war face because the Sergeant orders him, making his face red along with his shout and scream in front of Sergeant. After that, the Sergeant moves to the side of Private Joker and asks the height of the man, questioning whether maybe performing a cheat causes him to join the Corps. This guy is from Texas so the sergeant gave him a name as Private Cowboy. Next man is Leonard Lawrence, Hartman calls him Fat Boy so he names him as Gomer Pyle. This Private Pyle is grinning towards the sergeant so when the sergeant notices it, he orders him quickly to get on his knees and to choke himself. Pyle then chokes himself with the hands of the sergeant and gets up right away running through his breath after. When the next day comes, in Paris Island, South Carolina, the United States Marines Corps Recruit Depot are marching along with the sergeant, screaming left right on repeat. This training they are doing is an eight-week college for the phony tough and crazy brave. All of them are singing while marching. During the training sergeant shouts out Pila for he makes a mistake, the sergeant strikes his palm onto him and as consequence he walks along with his bottoms down behind his friends who are marching along. Then when they get back to their room the sergeant tells them to name their rifles with a name of a girl then after that the boys start to pray for their rifles. The next morning they continue their training, they still do their chants while training. Their training is never ending. There are obstacles runs, one-to-one -one man fights, agility tests etc. Once again, Pyle is again recognized by the sergeant so he receives a yell since he cannot perform well in their training because of his weight and situation. A challenge of walking and running through the mud is the next challenge they are doing, they all are carrying the arms of Pyle and helping him as they are being pressured also to get it done as quickly as they can. Sergeant banging a metal trash bin to serve as a wake-up call. The sergeant then approaches Joker and Cowboy, asking if they believe in Virgin Mary. Private Joker then disagrees with him, Hartman then slaps him repeatedly while questioning him on repeat too. The logic with that by Joker is that the sergeant will keep slapping him more harshly once he changes his answer. With that note, Sergeant Hartman then exchanges the squad leader from Snowball to Joker and that makes him the new squad leader as well for Pyle. The sergeant assigns Pyle to be bunk with Joker and that Joker will teach everything for Pyle because he has the guts. Afterward when the morning came, Joker then starts to teach Pyle. From the gun, to shoe lacing, along the obstacles which Leonard successfully is able to do. When the firing training comes Pyle is doing his best. Sergeant then reprimands everyone that their killer instinct will keep them surviving in the combat. He also keeps saying that their rifle is their only tool and that their hearts need to be hard to be able to kill. Ending the scolding of the sergeant he said that marines are not allowed to die with permission. Back to their room, nails of them are now being checked by Hartman. But suddenly he notices that the foot locker of Pyle is unlocked and when he checks it he sees the jelly donut Pyle sneaks from the mess hall. Because of the dishonoring action made by Pyle, all of his co-trainers are punished. Next morning Pyle confronts Joker saying that now everyone hates him but Joker said no. On the contrary when the evening comes, they team up against Pyle and hurt him while he is asleep. 
early in their training they are all aligned in the training but pile is not in the mood and just staring out of the context throughout the day of the training. While cleaning their guns, Joker notices that he is talking to the gun and shares it with the cowboy. When the shooting training comes again, Pyle shows his performance, causing Sergeant to compliment him. After that an evaluation is made which Joker fails to answer causing him to do 25 push-ups. After how many days their graduation day comes near, finally they are going to be Marines. The Sergeant calls them one by one with their designations and when the night comes before the graduation day, Joker is doing the fire watch. A ticking sound catches his attention causing him to go into the headroom where he finds Pyle sitting loading his guns. Pyle looks at Joker in a bad way causing Joker to be scared, asking if it has live rounds, Pyle replies that it is a full metal jacket with 7.62mm bullets. Pyle suddenly stands up, starts to prepare his gun chanting loudly causing other trainers to wake up and the sergeant too. When the sergeant comes inside the head confronting and asking Pyle to lay down his rifle, Pyle aims at him and shoots him. With that violent action of Pyle, he then shoots himself after that. In the urban retro city Joker is negotiating with a girl, his co-soldier is taking pictures of them when a boy snatches the camera. Back at their headquarters in the US Marine Corps de Nong field, Rafterman is ranting that he wants to be on the field and experience some trigger time. While having a meeting catching up about their report saying that there is something to blow during the Tet New Year's Eve celebration. A sudden attack bothers the boys inside the tent while joking to each other. They quickly get into their position and start to cover an attack, right then and there the enemy yells ceasefire. With that note Joker and Rafterman are sent to Fu Bay. On their landing they get ready and go right away to their position, Joker tagging along with Mr. Touchdown who is the commander platoon of Cowboy. They arrive in the pile of dead people full of white powder. Doing their duty as the reporters from Star and Tripes, Joker asks if the official count of the dead people is 20, the lieutenant then confirms. But the colonel interrupts him, questioning the button in his hat which is contradicting terms. After that they then search and visit for Cowboy and found him alongside with the Lusthog squad. In the field the Jolly Green Giants carrying their guns are all marching slowly looking for their enemy. But they were attacked without them knowing it causing their lieutenant to be down. The Lusthog squad on the move forward. On their position there are gunshots coming from the building side. Exchange of rattles of bullets comes then sudden quietness happens. After that the Marines troops occupies the space field, bombing it once more along with the reporters. Two men are down, they form a circle and state their praise to them. On the side doing an interview with every man sharing experience of the war. On the other side they are searching the area, Joker saying that intelligence passed a message down saying that during the night the NVA had pulled out of the area to positions across the Perfume River so they started a search patrol. Then one bang attacks their co-soldier causing him to be down one soldier they are trying to resuscitate but maybe it's too late. After that scenario Cowboy is then promoted as their squad leader, appointed by Murph through their call. Continuing with their patrol they then stop for a while checking that maybe there is a possibility that they make a mistake on taking the direction going to the checkpoint they think that they should change direction. This was when 8-Ball leads the change of the direction moving first but a sniper from a hidden place starts striking in his direction and he receives shots to his leg. The exchange of bullets is endless, not until they decide for a ceasefire to save their Amos because they did not see the sniper. Once again, 8-Ball is shot and Animal continues to attack. Murph calls Cowboy, he sends a request for tank support but some of the boys can't wait any longer one decides to get 8-Ball. They cover him when he arrives trying to pull back an 8-Ball he then receives a shot. They still don't see the sniper but are still trying their luck one more time contacting Murph but there is nothing, they were not able to see where the shot of the sniper is coming from. Animal contradicts Cowboy's order saying that they cannot let their co-soldiers and leave Doc J and Ate all, that there is only one sniper convincing other boys to side with him. Animal runs to the area of Doc J and Ate ball but both of them are wasted. Animal slowly makes a move. Now they are moving out with the help of Animal's orders. In their position, Cowboy tries to contact Murphy once again, but the sniper then sees him and shoots him right away causing him to be down. They try to move and hide him away but it's too late. Then they plan to get some payback. Positioning themselves, they get ready and start to throw smoke into the area for them to cross along with it, going to the building searching for that one sniper. When the soldiers enter the combusted building Joker slowly searches the area and by the time he sees a person standing back facing him, he fires it right away but he fails because he has no more bullets when the sniper notices she turns right away attacking Joker, she is a girl. Attacking Joker recklessly, he pulls out his pistol but Rafterman already takes her down. Rafterman searches the sides to make sure there is no other than screams that he got the sniper. Then the other men came along. 
They are all contemplating and deciding about what they will do with the lady sniper, Joker insisting with his genuine words, saying that they cannot leave the lady just as it is. But the lady then keeps talking, saying to shoot her. Joker deeply thinks and then shoots the lady after for quite a while. They go back to business, the scenario of darkness and burning fire. The boys nail their names into the pages of history. They are able to jump into the perfume river to fight during the night. They are all chanting and singing while marching. The movie ends with a narration from Joker saying how grateful he is that he is alive despite the situation and even though he is in the world of crap. His last words are that the important thing is that he is alive and that he is not afraid. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and to help the channel grow.